It's the Christmas season, and in true journal fashion, we're going to share it with our friends. Hi, friends, and welcome. It's Christmas time here on the journal. The snow is covering the ground on our bend in the river, and for us, that means faith and family and friends. So I thought this would be a perfect time to share what it looks like when we take some of our friends out hunting and fishing. Now I will warn you, there are old friends, there are new friends, and there's even some old friends doing some new things. All in all, sharing the out of doors with family and friends, well it's what cements those memories in your mind. Good and maybe not so good. I also should tell you that a lot of these friends are going to be up at our expo in Cadillac, Michigan this January. You can come and see them, all the outfitters, the businesses, everybody that is in the Wilderness Journal family is going to be there, and they're all going to be there hoping to see you just like myself. I'll put on the cup and the fire, you come and see me, we'll share some of those memories. And speaking of them, let's get to it. We're going to head out and see what it looks like when I just try to do a simple interview with some new friends. This is the Flugies, and I took them out on a fishing trip. They won on a PBS pledge special. And I was just trying to get them to answer a couple of questions, but as you'll see, it doesn't always work out the way you plan. Hey, I'm your host, Kyle Randall. This is my Wilderness Journal, and we're going out Christmas timing with friends right now. But I want to ask you, how'd you come to be fishing here today? I think I know. <laughs> yeah, they just stared back at me, and then they started talking to some guy who was talking to us from up on the riverbank. Part of the job. I don't know you're, you're going. And then, of course, I tried to ask him again, and <laughs> what's, that, what's that? that? She wants me to tell a story. Is that your? Is that? Is that? Speak, Hugo. Speak. Yes. <laughs> that is her story because uh, when we were watching uh, one of the broadcasts, and uh, and uh, they were, uh, and of course, there was the PBS network, I believe. Yeah. You know, yeah. WCMU, I imagine. WCMU. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And anyhow, uh, so they were uh, looking for uh, donations and what have you. So. Uh, who said, geez, honey, I, you've been watching this for a lot of years. Why don't you... Uh... What are you doing? Kyle, there's deer swimming over there. Well, I don't, I don't think our fishing license covers those. That is really cool. Yeah, that right. is really cool. And after the deer finally passed, they went back to fishing. Now well, let's, uh, Bob is catching fish behind you, so I, I think we ought to get, get back to work. What are you doing? Oh, just playing around up here. I thought this we were pretty... moving. No, that does look like <laughs> what, 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 what's the deal here? Oh, and then I got this wheel that goes back. Look at that there. pike. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a piker. Woo! Where'd he go? Right, right in the water. That's where I always look for the fish anyway. Oh! oh. Swing and a miss! Well, fire from the white glasses. <laughs> How'd they do, Sorry. Bob? You did good. Yeah. Oh. We did you, good. You wouldn't think an old man moved that quick, would you? I saw you dropping that camera to protect the camera more than your face. That's all right. That face is going to kind of beat them cameras are expensive. <laughs> That's fixable. <laughs> That's right. Hey. Bob's going to hesitate giving me the pole the next time. Nice fish. It was. It was. Did That's you get a good it? pike. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're professionals. We're on that stuff. We were looking right till you tried to hit me in the eye with the jig, and then I quit looking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I closed my eye. Sorry. Sorry, Kai. Good cameraman would have taken one for the team and just let it spank him right in the cheek, but no. I'm not a good cameraman. That's okay. I'm sorry. And before I could get back to the interview. Let's catch some real fish. Oh, well, what were them other ones? Plastic? Well, <laughs> you know, they, I think we can get bigger fish. What do you think, Bob? I don't know. Have you tipped the guide yet? Ain't over yet. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hadn't thought of that, you had, had you? That up, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just have to know when to quit. So I decided to wait till the end of the trip, and then I tried one more time. It's been a good day of fishing, folks. So what's the message? Just um, keep doing what you're yeah. doing. <laughs> Watch the Wilderness Enjoy Journal, fish with Bob Ison. Yeah. Pledge once in a while, you never know. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I finally just did it for him. And speaking of doing things for friends, as a thank you to Mr. Bob Ice and our host on that trip and a lot of others, I hosted him on a bow fishing trip down to Kentucky, something he said he really wanted to do, and it seemed like a good idea. And you can see him fading. Right. I saw a couple of them right here up 
top of them. <laughs> Old cubby of them, wasn't it? I had to flat shoot it. Can't get them off. What do you mean you can't get them all? You shot at them all. For the next couple hours, the pattern was pretty much the same. We were wearing those bows out shooting. That was a cubby shot. <laughs> I didn't get a single one. <laughs> how like many, 40 edge shots. How many, how how many you got to have? <laughs> how many you think was in that little yeah. cubby? A lot. I don't, I don't think that's a cubby. I think that's a flock. Says you don't focus. No, you, you gotta pick one, but yeah, on them you just. I do remember thinking that night that something was a little backwards, a little off. When we had an opportunity at singles or just a couple, we did okay. But whenever we had an easy shot at a whole group of fish, a covey shot, Dennis began to call it, we couldn't hit any of them. <laughs> yeah, lots of miles of teeth from there. You got him? Negative. <laughs> Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, right at you got too many miles to feed, don't you? <laughs> oh, it'll humble you in a hurry. Like, how can I miss all of it? It's pretty fun. Yeah, it's <laughs> Bob's first ever bow fishing trip was a lot of fun. So much so that when some of our other friends saw it, they wanted to go too. Uh, at least they thought they did. There was a full moon over Kentucky Lake as we got to trying. Dennis was scanning the water. He said it was a little early, but it didn't really take too long before. Oh, shoot. I don't know what they did there because I shot them a bit. Tell you, boys. Lost my bounce a little bit there. <laughs> it's a non swimming event, I told you. <laughs> There's Gar. Way high. We were launching some arrows, but so far at least, I don't think we were really even scaring them. Shoot them. Those are all fish miles you were looking at. There's a whole cub yet. It was all on him. The fish moved. Yeah. The wrong did. way. Did. He did. Well, we'll have yeah. a word with him. I'm going to talk with that one. Talk to your guide. Yeah, I'll talk to you. <laughs> And it's not just bow fishing. Our friends like to go along when we go fishing wherever we're headed, no matter what the species. Hey, Lefty, <laughs> put it in the, put it in there. Come yeah. on. Do you think we drug you up here to look pretty? Throw that up there. I assure you that's not the reason. To look pretty? No. No. Here we go. Gee, that wasn't it. You've done well, there it. There, so let it set, that's let it set. One. You're in the spot. It disappeared. Yeah, you got it. I think you got that fish. Catch and release, just like hey, Rob wanted. Hey, you are a conservator. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to directions. I think the fish really like our friends like Ryan. But even when it's me trying to land the big one, our friends really want to help. Wow. You know, the way she's sitting there is mighty suspect. <laughs> She seems awful calm, don't she? I'm gonna let I'm gonna give you a little lead there. Turn it around this way, see if I can. Oh, boy, oh my gosh. <gasps> oh. Oh. I think that qualifies. We have leader. <laughs> my! <laughs> oh, there wow. is a fish, brother. You betcha. Dang! Watch, 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 let her go. Or at least they try to. And no, it's not just me they try to help. It's Tina, too. Fish. Fish already? Yeah. We just got here. <laughs> You're probably snagged. Snag looks like lunch. It does. Oh. Yeah, that was way too big for shore lunch, Kev. Nice move there. Good. <laughs> Good release. Hey, look at me. You are a true conservator. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. This is kind of like old times. <laughs> He's heard of you. That's a nice fish. Yeah, well, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Well, you want you need a break yet? No. Oh. I'm pretty sure Kevin never wanted to drop Tina's very first fish at his lodge. He was just trying to help. And speaking of help, sometimes our friends have trouble helping themselves. 
For several long, agonizing minutes, the bear licked and chewed at our honey-burnt piece of log, but he never once turned and got sideways. He was constantly face-on all of the time. I thought certainly this bear is going to sooner or later turn and get into the bait, calm down. I'm sure that's what Mike was thinking. And then, then he turned sideways just for a second, but he stared right up at Mike. And then he walked off into the brush. He went back over and stood where he had before, sniffing and just looking around. We waited. And waited. And then he was gone. Oh, man. And sometimes, well, sometimes even the critters are trying to help, or at least that's the way it seems. Threw his head up and looked behind us, I thought for sure. I turned and peeked and <laughs> I whispered to Tina, Did you invite some friends? Yes, we get all kinds of help from our friends. They even sometimes try to help themselves do our stuff. Damn, you took the bait. Uh-oh, that's the only one of those I had. <laughs> Tina don't mind if you borrow hers. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it's already in the water. Here, give me that one. I'll get a... <laughs> Greg was just teasing Tina. But we have had more than a few issues with our friends trying to help themselves. Not to our stuff, just helping themselves. Sometimes it's not just the shot that we miss. Sometimes it's the entire opportunity. We already had a couple of cows and calves standing right next to us when Mr. Big sauntered right down into the wallow. Right in front of Tom. <coughs> 20 yards, broadside, it was never going to get better than this. That bull walked right straight down into the wallow after bugling in Tom's face. I whispered for Tom to get up, but he just sat there. And I whispered again, I could hear the bull coming up out of the wallow. Get up and show. I whispered again this time so loud the bull could hear me. He trotted up the hill. Finally, Tom stood and he was so afraid to spook the cows, he let the bull walk right on by him. Tom may have missed a real opportunity, but a lot of our friends have misused their equipment when their opportunity showed up and it didn't work out so well for them either. And not all misses are caused by nerves. Some are just poor preparation. I'm on him. <laughs> need I remind you, this is a family show. <laughs> Guide. You want to load it for me the next time? He did it backwards. <laughs> oh, the cap was in backwards? <laughs> Dan may have loaded the disc in my rifle backwards, but Brandon was using his own bow, and he still seemed to miss the point. Brandon wasn't going to miss his opportunity again. He drew his bow, and his arrow fell off the string. I was watching the bear, and I kept hearing this little voice saying, Help! Kyle, help me. Yes, bears have made our friends do some strange things. And it certainly wasn't just Brandon. You got bit. <laughs> You're supposed to bloody the bear, not yourself. <laughs> I don't know. When we finally got the bleeding stopped, on Dale, not the bear, we did go out and recover his prize, but he certainly wasn't the only one to injure himself on one of our trips. Bob moved us back up alongside the dam and got out his fly rod this time and started casting. And it wasn't long before... Bob got a chance to learn how we remove hooks on that trip. But I'll tell you, friends, on some trips, it seems like some of our friends, well, they're just shooting blanks. You're going back to your wife. Take 
And speaking of shooting blanks, way too far away. Nope. Rooster! Shoot him! Rooster, shoot him! Rooster, shoot him! Rooster! Shoot him! Shoot him again! Rooster! Shoot him! Rooster, shoot him! Shoot him again! What happened there? I stayed on the edge. Uh huh. The birds. Yeah? Yep. I didn't see them fall. No, no. They're fine, nice and good. They're healthy. <laughs> They're okay. Brandon was a really good sport on a tough day, and I'd like to tell you he's gotten a lot better with that shotgun. Yeah, I'd like to tell you that. What I will tell you is we've had more than a few friends do more than a little shooting on some of our trips. That's a good gator right there. Back of his head. Right, let's go ahead and take him. Get to the right side of the pond, see all the bubbles? Yep. Yeah. That gun surprise you want to mm -hmm. go Bill. I'm ready. Go ahead. All right, right at the water line, left hand side. Nice and easy, Bill. Over Still in my high. foot. Right and left's money, it's purple. Bill's shot had missed high, but almost amazingly, he's on the right edge right there. The gator popped back up. He was a little closer to the shore, kind of hiding a little bit in the grass, but we could still see him. All right. Nice and slow. If you aim right at the top of his high, See, it's the gun. Yep. And it really doesn't seem to matter whether it's over the water or even on dry land. Just low. Right. Over. Boy, that's a booner and you missed him. Better shoot again, Mike. It Here was you go. about <laughs> then Mike handed me the rifle. It's no the gun. <laughs> <laughs> and some of our friends apparently have trouble with one at a time, so we have tried the multiple targets route, but convince yourself that all you really need is a better setup, you know, like they have on TV. Yeah, go. You hit in the middle of them. One's coming right at you on the ice. No, let him come. Let him come. Let him come. Sometimes seems like no matter what we do. Time. Bah. Bah. <laughs> nope, that wasn't the answer for Bill either. At least not that day. I will say, however, my good friend Bill, he's found himself in more than a few strange situations. <laughs> and sometimes when that happens, it gets a little difficult to tell just who's hunting who. Bill had just aired another great bear, but the excitement, well, let's just say it wasn't quite over yet. Look at that. Just He's right there. Right there? Oh, yeah. We gotta keep an eye on him. Yeah. That smaller bear that had run off earlier was back, and now he was shadowing the guys, following their every move at less than like 10, 15 yards. You talk about intense. Hold on a sec, Bill. Imagine having a 200 pound boar following the same blood trail you're following at the same time. That was a pretty close call. And strange situations, you know, when I think about it, they seem to be kind of common when we take our friends out. When I saw Mike stop, the goat turned and looked at us. I looked over and a badger had come out of a hole right out in front of Mike, not 20 yards. There they sat, staring at each other. I'm sure that badger was thinking, what in the world is this? And I know Mike was thinking, what do I do now? And then finally the badger popped back down the hole. Mike looked back over and, and the goat was gone. I really do enjoy helping our friends get out into the woods and on the water, especially when there's a chance to take them out for a first time something, like Bob Ison in his first ever archery turkey hunt. Shoot him. <laughs> you missed. Shot low. So that's 
That's the difference between a bow and a shotgun, I guess. And it's not just hunting. I really enjoyed sharing a new kind of bass fishing with our friend Brandon. You want me to get the net? Nah, I think it is the net. Oh, is it a keeper? I'll throw it back. Okay. Well, you really do never know what you might catch in the river, but suffice it to say, they can't all make a big splash. And we got that on camera. And then again. Woo! Told you, no swimming. <laughs> And friends, many times, our friends don't need our help at all. Over's back. Friends, my life would be far cheaper without them. I have to tell you that no matter where we go, no matter what we do, it's the memories you make and who you share it with that makes it special my granddad always used to tell me the worst trip in the world can be made bearable and even a good time if you take the right people along and the best trip in the world can be ruined by one fella that just doesn't get it. No, he didn't say it that way, but it's Christmas time. And speaking of Christmas time, we here at the Journal pray that the Lord richly blesses each and every one of you. We pray that your hopes are many and your worries are few that you are healthy and prosperous in the new year. We certainly hope to see some of you up at the expo and share that friendship, old or new. We hope that you're out there with your friends, building and sharing the memories that the outdoors has to offer. And if we see you out there, well, you can rest assured, we will stop and share that cup and a fire. And if we don't see you out there, we will certainly be right back here for a whole nother year of friends doing great things on my wilderness journal.